Welcome back. World leaders and climate change experts will gather later this month in Paris for the United Nations Climate Change Conference with the goal of getting a legally binding climate agreement. One target, reduce greenhouse gas emissions to help keep global warming to no more than two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial industrial levels. And to explain what this means, welcome to the hard line climate systems dynamic professor from the University of Exeter, Peter Cox. Professor Cox, thanks for joining us. Now, you've said hitting Hello. these greenhouse gas reduction targets won't likely be met through conventional approaches. So what needs to be done? Yeah, so first of all, I should give you the good news. We've got more pledges for cutting greenhouse gas emissions than we've ever had before. So there is a chance that we start to bend the curve so they don't just carry on going up and up in temperature. But um, the issue is that all of the future scenarios that avoid two degrees of warming, which is what the target's about, um, also involve an assumption called negative emissions and that essentially means that they assume that sometime in the future we have the technology to suck CO2 out of the air and store it safely. And that's in principle possible but it doesn't yet exist. All right, we're, we're hopeful obviously for this technology but in the meantime when we talk about stabilizing the climate, what's at stake here? Well, at the moment we are on a what you might call a business as usual scenario that's at the upper end of what we, we thought might be the case. Um, I'm part of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and we looked at a range of possible futures. We unfortunately are on the upper one of those and that leads to three to four degrees of global warming and that's the global average across all areas of the go globe. And of course most of those are the ocean and they um, warm more slowly than the global average and people don't live there. So if you actually think about what people are exposed to, the average warming people are exposed to, on the scenario we're currently on, it's more like five to seven degrees, which is an awful lot. And um, many climate scientists think that would be a dangerous amount of adaptation to expect, particularly from people that might not be able to do it very easily because they're poor. Professor Cox, I don't need to tell you, this is such a hot button issue with people passionate on both sides of the argument. You've started this global conversation tour before the big summit in Paris. What are you trying to accomplish through some of your discussions and some of your lectures? We're hoping really with, with global conversations do open up a global conversation to sort of um, blow the doors off uh, the polarized debate that, that occurs around climate change. I mean, climate change is, I'm a climate scientist, is, is partly about the underlying science, but the whole debate is presented like politics where uh, people take a position, an ideological position, and then they defend it by selecting the facts. And that's not very helpful when you're trying to solve the problem rather than just argue about whether it exists. So what we're trying to do is to say there are things we know and we've known for a long time about uh, climate change and, and the, the impact that humans are having on the environment. We now need to start acting on it. And because there's been delays in action, the simple things to do, like cutting emissions, will not be enough to avoid two degrees. That's not to say we shouldn't work hard to cut emissions, um, but it won't be enough to avoid two degrees unless we have some other technology um, like geoengineering, it is termed, to take CO2 out of the air. Once again, a global conversation on climate change culminating in that big get-together in Paris coming up in just a couple of weeks. Professor Peter Cox from Exeter, thank you so much for the discussion right here on The Hard Line. And that's going to do it for this Friday. Just a reminder, Ed Berliner is back on Monday. We want to hear from you. Give us your comments. Send them right here to Newsmax TV. In the meantime, we hope you have a great Friday and have a fabulous weekend. Ed back on Monday.